It's time once again for the South Union Township Sports Network in cooperation with Atlantic Broadband Cable and the South Union Township Supervisors. We bring you live streaming this evening from the Harold Horse Taylor Memorial Gymnasium on the South Union Township Facebook Live. The Laurel Highlands Boys Mustang team will be hosting the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars. Hello, everyone. This is Gary Frank Alter with Tony and Lola bringing you the play-by-play. Jerry Dupay behind the camera, and we welcome you aboard for this evening's basketball action. The South Indian Township Sports Network coverage is brought to you as a joint cooperative venture featuring the supervisors, Bob Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, Atlantic Broadband Cable, Armstrong Cable, and CUTV with Gary Smith. Once again, Gary Frankhauser and Tony Anula will be right back with the starting lineups for both squads here from the Harold Horse Taylor Memorial Gymnasium. Smith, Lewis, and Chess, CPOs in Uniontown. We'd like to wish the Law Highlands Boys basketball team and the coaches on having another successful basketball season this year. Attorneys from all over the state and nation advertise in southwestern Pennsylvania for personal injury and workers' comp cases, but most of them send their assistants to do the legwork. You might not even meet your attorney until your first hearing. We're local attorneys, Davis and Davis. We meet directly with our clients, including free consultation. There are no fees until you receive money on your case. If you've been injured, call Davis and Davis, representing you and your neighbors yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Call 724-437-2799. The key to success in life is teamwork. On and off the field, in the workplace, in the home, in our schools. Teamwork gets it done. The world of competitive sports offers many good things, the most important of which is teamwork. Individual talent may win a few games, but teamwork wins championships. Go team. Go Royal Highlands Mustangs. This positive message has been brought to you and paid for by Jason Scott. Dr. Fraser Stokes. Did you know that colorectal cancer is the second leading cancer killer in America or that it can be prevented by removing polyps during a 30-minute colonoscopy? At SWGI, our board-certified gastroenterologists, Drs. Ruth Hart Calabrese Hoppe and I, encourage you to consider a screening colonoscopy. Call 724-437-7677 or visit swgispecialists.com. Welcome back. Both squads completing their pregame warm-ups here. The Mustangs in their home white and the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars in their traveling gold uniforms. Let's take a look at those starting lineups, Tony. All right. Tonight for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs coming in at 6-0. This is their first conference game of the season. Head coach Rick Hogger in his 17th year. His assistant coaches are John Smith and De'Aire Jenkins. His starters for tonight will be Rodney Gallagher, a six-foot junior guard. Brandon Davis, a 6'1 junior guard. Jaden Pratt, a 6'3 senior forward. Joe Chambers, a 6'2 senior guard. And Ayanze Sumter, a 6'2 senior forward, getting the start in place of Nico Johns, who is out for today's game. And, and also, Keandre DeShields just coming back from an illness last week, so he won't get the start, but he'll be I'm sure he'll be the first man off the bench for the Laurel Islands Mustangs. Absolutely. For the and, Thomas Jeff, go ahead. I'm sorry, yeah, Gary. Go ahead. For no. the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars under Coach Dom DeSico. Dom DeSico in his 17th season. They come in at two and six overall, and this is their first conference game as well. Coach DeSico's starters tonight will be number one Ryan Lowry, a 5'8 junior guard. Evan Berger, a 6'2 sophomore guard. Joe Lexi, a 5'9 senior guard. 
Sean Sullivan, a six-foot sophomore guard, and Kyler Bender, a 6'1 senior forward for the Jaguars. And interesting, the Jaguars are led by the sophomore, as you said, number four. I'm sorry, number three, two. I'm going to get it right here one of these days. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Number two, Evan Berger, <laughs> six foot two sophomore guard, averaging over 21 points per game. And uh, looks like the Jaguars really lean hard on him for scoring. Well, he had a couple good games against Laurel Highlands last year when he did the games. We, we did the game down to Thomas Jefferson. I think he hit five threes coming off the bench for him as a freshman. So he had a fantastic game, and he's just kind of picked up where he left off. And as for the Mustangs, this has become somewhat of a rivalry with Thomas Jefferson, especially defeating them in the semifinals of the 2020 WPL championship uh, series there. So, you know, big game here, and the Mustangs have won the last four against TJ, and we'll see what happens here tonight. And as you said, it will be a little bit interesting, a little bit of mixed in the lineup for the Mustangs with uh, Nico Johns. They rely on him a lot under the boards to uh, pick up the garbage bat buckets and uh, rebounding both offensively and defensively. So he will be missed. And as you said, the Shields, having not played in the last game, probably missed a bunch of practices, and that's probably why he's not starting tonight. But I'm sure, as you said, we'll see him back in – the game early and often yeah i don't think it's going to take long for him to get in a game although we saw last week that the mustangs played pretty well without him no doubt we thought they may have a tough time in the game we did last week but it didn't matter either way just on cruise control the whole time and it, we also saw rodney gallagher choosing the role that he wants to take as you said in that last game coming up with 27 points and what we had seen previously in the previous five games was him being very unselfish, dealing out the assist to his other running mates. Well, and that's it. He does what he needs to do to win, no doubt. And we said that before. He can, If he needs to score, he will, and he'll take over the game. And if not, he's going to play the point guard position and do whatever Coach Hogger asks him to do. We'll call that the Roethlisberger theory. <laughs> whatever it takes to win. That's right. <laughs> So with that, we'll be back after these messages here on the South Union Township Sports Network. We're eight minutes from the opening tip here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Are you getting collection calls, finding bills in the mail you can't pay? Are you expecting shutoff or foreclosure notices? If you are in financial trouble, you need to know that there is help under the law that will help protect you and your assets. Hi, this is attorney Chuck Zebley with Zebley Mahal and White. Allow us to help you protect yourself. If you are in debt and have no way out, let us help you understand your options under the federal bankruptcy laws. Filing bankruptcy is not the end of the road. For many, it's a fresh start and a new beginning. So give our office a call today, 724-439. 9200 or visit our website at zeblaw.com zebley mahal and white in uniontown local attorneys helping local people let us help you fix your life zebley mahal and white it's gonna be all it's gonna be all Some things just go together, like bread and butter, blue jeans and Saturdays, best friends and phone calls. And a great match? You and discounts from Erie Insurance. It's like this. Safety features in your car will have you paying less for your auto insurance. And pay off your Erie Auto policy all at once, and you'll save up to 7% more. On your homeowner's policy, you earn discounts that start at age 46 and go up each time you celebrate a birthday. There are more discounts, too, for things like home safety features and even teenage drivers. And the savings keep adding up. When you have your auto and home covered with Erie, you get a discount. Buy a life policy with us, and the savings can get even better. At Erie Insurance, above all in service means making life a little easier on you and on your wallet. Your Erie agent is waiting for you. Your local Erie agent is Sprowls Insurance Group, 724-437-9812, or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Discount terms and amounts may vary by state. See your local Erie agent for details. At what point did everything change? When did service get taken out of service industries? It's too bad, because people are busy these days, at life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service. 
real service from a person you know and a face you trust. At a bank, we're changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank at your service. South Union Township Supervisors, Robert Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott. We'd like to wish the Lawhines boys basketball team and their coaches on having another great basketball season this year. basketball team and their coaches on having another successful basketball season this year from the Laura Hines Mustang Boosters. Dr. Fraser Stokes. Have you ever felt something stick in your chest when swallowing? This can be caused by a narrowing in your esophagus from inflammation, scar tissue, or rarely a tumor. At SWGI, our board-certified gastroenterologist, Dr. Ruthart Calabrese Hoppy, and I specialize in the care of swallowing disorders. Call 724-437-7677 or visit swgispecialist.com. Sam Davis was a gift from heaven. He knows the law and the court system unlike anyone else I've ever met or seen. Sam helped me get through the federal court system with the best possible outcome. Davis and Davis, personal injury and workers' comp. We at Davis and Davis are humbled by what our clients have to say about us. If you've been injured, call me, Jim Davis, for a free consultation. We have been helping injured people for over 40 years. Call 724-437-2799. The key to success in life is teamwork. On and off the field, in the workplace, in the home, in our schools. Teamwork gets it done. The world of competitive sports offers many good things, the most important of which is teamwork. Individual talent may win a few games, but teamwork wins championships. Go team! Go Laurel Highlands Mustangs! This positive message has been brought to you and paid for by Jason Scott. Welcome back to Laurel Highlands High School, where the Mustangs and the Jaguars are ready to do back at battle here in the first section action of the season. As we said, Thomas Jefferson coming in two and six, and Laurel Highlands coming in six and zero. Oh. Tony, it's going to be uh, again another situation where we can see if the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars can handle the pressure defense of the Mustangs which has been tremendous so far this season and led to some very quick points by the Mustangs. Well, they're, yeah, you're right, Gary, and the full-court pressure and even the half-court pressure have led to a lot of easy baskets for the Mustangs, and it's going to be imperative for the guards for TJ to stay in this game and actually be able to get the ball across half-court because, you know, the Mustangs like to pressure it and force the turnovers, and uh, they're going to have a tall task here tonight to do that. Officials for tonight's contest, our referee is Billy Beaner. His associates, Mike Chokel and Ron Galulo, familiar faces that uh, I have had the opportunity to work with throughout the years, and I'm sure they'll do a fantastic job here this evening officiating this contest. Thomas Jefferson has gone to their bench, and the Mustangs are finishing up their warm-ups 
And in about one minute, we're going to have the national anthem as well as the announcement of the starting lineups by our PA announcer here at Laurel Highlands High School. And another good crowd here tonight, Gary. Yeah. And they've been bringing them in with showtime, as we call it. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> we've seen a few showtimes, no doubt. Let's switch it down to the PA announcer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Laurel Highlands Senior High School. And Coach Harold Horse Taylor Memorial Gymnasium. For this evening's boys basketball matchup between a visiting Thomas Jefferson Jaguars and your Laurel Highland Mustang. At this time, we would ask everyone please rise and gentlemen remove your hats for the play for a national anthem. Here we 
go, Tony. The Mustangs going left to right on your live streaming screen here. And the Jaguars going right to left. Jumping center for Thomas Jefferson will be number two, Evan Berger. To jump against, I believe, will be Pratt. I think it will be Pratt. <clears throat> and as we said, a surprise start tonight for Ayonze Sumter. But with Nico Johns out, needed somebody to fill the space. And as you said, the Shields missed a few practices, so I'm sure they're going to try to ease him back in. Although I don't think it'll take him long to get get ready to go. And Sumter's a wide body in there that can provide some meat in that rebounding circle, and that's out of bounds, dribbled out of bounds, and they're going to say it back to Laurel Islands. Wow. wow. Nice poke away there by Sumter. Laurie didn't like to call. No, not at all. <laughs> so that'll bring the Mustangs back, facing a man-to-man -man defense. Man, I'm not so sure how long that's going to last. They won't see that too often this year. Gallagher now trying to work one-on-one, -on -one, gets to the hoop, and he's held before he gets to the hoop. And that's going to be on number 11. First foul on him, that's Kyler Bender. And as we said, the Mustangs, a lot of quickness. Not so sure how long Thomas Jefferson will stay in man-to-man -man defense against this team. They go to that 2-3 zone out of bounds and will stay into it temporarily. Pratt from the corner, no good off the rim and... Berger down with the rebound. Quickly up come the Jaguars. Berger with the runner won't go and it's going to knock up off the rim and Pratt comes down with the rebound. Gets it out on the wing to Davis. Shake and bake to the hoop with the left. What a finish, Tone. That was beautiful right there. I actually thought he was going to dish it off but went to the left hand. Nice move there by Davis to pick up his first points of the night. TJ able to break the press but knocked out of bounds there by Davis almost with a steal and the Jaguars will have it out of bounds underneath their own hoop just underway here seven minutes to go one minute in nice pass inside and that's going to be a foul called I believe on Gallagher let's uh, see yeah I think it's going to be on Rod with the reach that's going to be a two-shot foul is going up for the shot was Kyler Berger Bender, I'm sorry. Well, Bender Berger and Bender. Berger and Bender. Well, Bender, 75% free throw shooter, came in averaging two a game. Got that shooter's role there. Sounds like a law firm. <laughs> <laughs> and you would know. <laughs> Second one in. So we're all tied at two. <laughs> no, still in the man. Gallagher down the left wing, and he'll stop and shoot from the elbow off the iron. No good. Pratt with the rebound. He'll take it to the hoop, and he's fouled. The Mustangs create a lot of fouls under the hoop, and that's a product of the offensive rebounding. Well, I was just going to say that. you get When you can get that many offensive rebounds as the Mustangs have throughout this season, it's a big difference and especially puts a lot of heat on the other side's defense, no doubt. So Pratt will have two opportunities here at the hoop and rolls the first one out. Pratt came in, started last game against Woodland Hills in place of the Shields who was missing and stepped up admirably, had 22 in that game. And he was a 75% free throw shooter before those two misses. Yeah, missed them both. Mustangs right now look a little flat. But that won't Man. take long before they heat up. Berger thought about the jumper, but he gets it back out on top now here to Sullivan. Sullivan working on Gallagher. Nice move. And we got to travel. Billy Beaner on the call. Just too many steps. Nice spin move there by Berger, but just drug the pivot foot. Nice spin moving. He's trying to do whatever he can. As you said, he came in averaging 21 points a game. Davis now, one-on-one. -on -one. It might be a tough matchup there for number three, Joe Lexi, as Davis just goes right around him and scores again. So Davis with all four of the Mustang early points. And again, nice steal. Oh, oh. Chambers almost with the steal. Good anticipation there by Joe. He anticipated a pass from Lexi. He was trying to get it down to Bender. And nice job by Chambers, a step in that passing lane, a near, near steal. So they're going to let Berger handle things out front here against Davis. Davis, one of the best Mustang defenders. And there's a good pass underneath. 
and unable to get back after the double team there, give Bender the bucket. Gallagher now try to go baseline, gets it in the corner to Chambers, three on the way, too strong. Here come the Jaguars. Lexi back out to Berger. And as it knocked away, man open deep, but unable to get it ahead was Gallagher. Now with numbers, Gallagher will get it inside of Chambers. Couldn't get it up to the hoop. Pratt for three, in and out. But Sumter now will get the rebound. And good work in there by Ayanze Sumter to box his man out on the offensive board and gets the call on the foul. Yes. Possession to the Mustangs. He's going to pick up his second foul on Bender. Bender, the 6'1 senior forward. He's going to have to take a seat now with 5.08 to go. Checking in for him will be Elias Lippincott, a 6'2 sophomore. Gallagher will take the long three, and you can see that one <laughs> from here going down. That's Gets his, his first three. That's his 12th made three of the year. And that's going to be a step out of bounds again. Second time for junior guard Ryan Lawry. Well, we've seen the Mustangs, and once they get that full court press, they seem to get a lot of traps on the sidelines and forced a lot of turnovers. We saw that a lot against Woodland Hills last week. As you said, things are kind of at a lull, and Pratt with another jumper, probably not the shot that Rick Hogger would want to see out of that. And long three on the way there. Berger, we could expect that, and that's going to tie it at seven. Berger, an extremely accurate three-point shooter for TJ. Gallagher to the hoop, gets it up, and gets the roll and the bucket with the foul. Now Rod says, okay, let me take over here a little bit. Kind of pick up the pace and see what we can do. It's amazing how he can slice through those double teams. He's just so quick. It's, it's, it's impressive. That foul is going to be called on Sean Sullivan. Three-point play on the way and good for Rodney Gallagher. Another three-point advantage now for the Mustangs. Gallagher's Mustangs just pick up man-to-man. -man. Yeah, and he's got six already. Coming off that 26-point game last week. Nice, nice, nice move. play there by Lowry, and he goes with the left, gets the hoop. Foul there on Joe Chambers, so back and forth we go. And here comes the Shields, and we didn't think it would take him too long. He sat for the first four minutes. So now Sumter's going to check out. And essentially the Mustangs' top six players without Nico Johns. Three on the way and tied up again at 10. Whoa. Dish. Pratt just tripped over the baseline there. <laughs> Came up and bit him. <laughs> now they go into a, looks like a 1 2 2 zone, 3 2 zone. DeShields, no, no delay there as he lets it fly. And good box out there by Berger on Gallagher. Now TJ with the opportunity to take the lead. Berger on the way, no good. Rebound pulled down there by Lippincott. Gets it, Lowry and the three on the way now. And Pratt with the rebound. Get it out to Gallagher on the run. Stop and pop. Too hard off the rim. Now coming back again will be TJ. Get to Berger. Lexi with the jumper, and he'll hit baseline, giving TJ their first lead of the game at 12 to 10. Now, TJ not backing down here, no doubt. Five to go here in the first. And it might be the first, first, oh, Chambers was not looking for that pass. Might be the first time that the Mustangs have trailed in the first quarter all year. I, I think you could be correct there, Gary. <laughs> we, we did see him have a slow start one game, and I can't remember exactly who it was against. Yeah, but they started out a little bit slow. It was almost like they were sleepwalking, and then all of a sudden they just turned on the Jets. Sullivan now looking across. This is a burger, and he, he traveled walked. again. Yeah. Needs to get some uh, <laughs> stick them on his shoes, I think. Yeah, he's uh, sliding a little needs bit. Needs the longer cleats. <laughs> so Mustangs now trailing 12 to 10 with 2.25 to go. Coach Hogger now calling for Pratt to get it to high post, get it in the corner to Chambers. 
Davis on the way for a three, in and out. Good rebound by the Shields. He'll take it to the hoop, won't finish. Now Pratt can't get it to go. So three opportunities at the hoop, unsuccessful for the Mustangs. Back comes TJ. Berger now being guarded again by Davis. Close man-to-man defense. And has it tipped away. That could have been a travel, no call. Now we have to take away Davis through hoop and blocked out of his hands nicely there by Evan Berger. Yeah, so nice Give job. Berger uh, a lot of credit there. Hustled back on defense and knocked it away from Davis, who looked for the easy hoop. Yeah, not so sure that Davis wasn't going to maybe alley-oop that. He had the shields on the other side. Well, at this point, trailing <laughs> by two, the Mustangs just need to work on getting the ball in the hoop. Davis tried to go baseline again, and strong rebound there by Lippincott. Mustangs cold here, have gone about two and a half minutes without scoring. Well, this is going to be a little wake-up call for him, and I know you and I both talked to Coach Auger, and that's what he said. We need a little competition. We need a couple games that are close so that we can wake up a little bit. Now we got a timeout call here by Thomas Jefferson. It's going to be a 30-second timeout with them having the lead, 12 to 10, minute 13 to go here in the first. You're watching the South Union Township Sports Network. Personal injury can come in many forms. No matter what your injury, the attorneys at Davis & Davis will personally meet with you to discuss your case, just like we have over the last 40 years. Trust your case to a local, experienced legal team. Trust Davis & Davis. Quick 30-second timeout, Tony, and uh, Mustangs need to regroup here a little bit, try to get a little more intensity involved and uh, finish at the hoop after three or four offensive rebounds, unable to put it through the cylinder. Well, that's the thing, Gary. They've gotten a few offensive rebounds and a few chances for putbacks. They just can't get the ball to go right now. Once the lid's taken off, though, look out. <laughs> well, he came in averaging, what, 80 points a game. Only 10 so far here in the first. Yeah, averaging, averaging 82 and giving up 46. Davis with the steal, but not able to maintain his footing. Goes out of bounds, so back to Thomas Jefferson. 101 to go here in this first quarter. Maybe, maybe too much New Year's action for the Mustangs. I don't know. Look Holiday a little slow break. right now. Yeah. They practiced every day, though. Oh, yeah. Berger's not going to be shy. Well, he's Gets averaging. Out on top. Yeah, he's averaging 21, so he's surely not going to be shy. Good post up there, and that's going to be a travel, I think. You no, know, they're going to call foul on the floor on Chambers, I think. Yeah, that's I think you're correct. That's going to be his second. Yep. Did not get around in time to stop the post up there by Elias Lippincott deep on the block. On the block. Well, nice, nice ball fake there by Lippincott to draw the foul. Bodied him up a little bit in Chambers now. Got to be careful with two. Lowry can't get it to go now. Pratt with the rebound. Gets it out to Gallagher. He's one on three. Going to get it out on top to Pratt. Well, Over to Gallagher. Three on the way. In and out. No good. And once again, the Mustangs <laughs> unsuccessful at the offensive end. Well, and they had Berger. numbers. Try to hand off un underneath the lip and caught it. Very unselfish act there. Had him available, but not able to complete it. Mustangs going about three minutes now without scoring. Yeah. Now Blaze Krisner is going to check in for Joe Chambers. He's going to take a seat with those two fouls. 19.2 seconds to go here, first quarter. Lexi gets it in now to Sullivan. Berger will do it himself here, I'm sure. No. Gets it back to Lexi. Berger for three. No good. DeShields now will bring it ahead. Five seconds to go. Gallagher, four seconds. There's a little walk, I believe, but they're going to call a good hoop. Wow. Give him the Euro step twice, <laughs> I think. And that's going to be a hoop and a foul for DeShields. Foul called there on Lip number and one. Lip, I'm sorry, they gave it to Laurie. No, it's on no, Lippincott. I'm sorry, Lippincott, yep. 12. 
Yeah, so that's going to send the Shields to the line where he's in. And he misses the foul shot uncharacteristically. The Mustang just one for four at the line, and that'll do it for the first quarter. We're all tied at 12. Gary Frankhauser and Tony Anola. Jerry Dupe on the camera on the South Union Township Sports Network. We'll be right back. Suddenly my heart lost and white. It's gonna be all, it's gonna be all right. Filing for bankruptcy is not something that anyone wants to do. Good people sometimes run into hard times and they need help. Hi, I'm Dan White with the Law Offices of Zebley, Mahalib and White, and I'm here to help. If you're faced with insurmountable debt and are out of options and you need help, give our office a call today. Allow us to help you understand your rights and options under the law. Filing bankruptcy is not the end of the road, and if you're struggling with debt, it very well could be a new beginning. So stop worrying and take action. Give our office a call today at 724-439-9200 or click on zeblaw.com for more information. Zebley, Mahalib and White, local attorneys helping local people. Let us help you fix your here we go second quarter action all tied at 12 it'll be the mustang possession thomas jefferson falling back into a 2-3 zone so they've been switching up the defenses each time down the court tony well, that's a good move. As we said, don't be in the man-to-man -man against this team. And Pratt just cannot get anything to fall. The Shields has it knocked away. Back comes TJ. Lexi now with the left-hand dribble to Berger. Berger now trying to find some help. Has it knocked away? That could be a backcourt, and it is. Over and back. Good defense there by number 24 for the Mustangs, Blaze Krisner. Krisner, yeah, Krisner with a nice job. Checked in for Joe Chambers there who got in foul trouble. So Krisner showing. Brad, he's not shy. <laughs> <laughs> and finally hits one. Well, and you hope he's one of those confidence players that once he gets one down, you know, That's ready to go. Another turnover there for Ryan Lowry. That's his third turnover here in the first half. Give the Mustangs the ball back with a two-point advantage. 14 to 12. And it's a tough turnover there, especially being 75 feet away from the basket. Don't even get a chance to take a shot or even make a point. Wasn't really pressured either. No. Davis now gets it out to the Shields for the three-pointer. Won't go. Gallagher with the running tip. Couldn't get it to go. Back down come the Jaguars with numbers. In the corner, Berger. He'll take the three. That's short. The Shields with the rebound. Ahead to Gallagher. Pratt. Oh, and he tried to slam and <laughs> did not get it to go. And Coach Hogger will say, put it in the hoop, son. That's exactly right. You don't need the show time. You don't need anything like that to happen. And but Pratt showing his frustration. He's, and Coach Hogger's going to call him over. But the bigger thing is Berger picked up his second foul on that play. So now all of a sudden they're top scorer with two fouls here with 6.44 to go, second quarter. Rodney with his second foul shot made. Two for two at the line for Rodney. Gives the Mustangs now a three-point lead as Berger goes to the bench. He's checking in number 21, Joe Mendick. Gallagher second on the way and good. Gives him eight. And you had – you have Berger averaging 21, and then after him, Sean Sullivan averaging nine. So somebody's going to have to step up for this TJ team, and there's another backcourt. Could have been a foul call, a lot of contact there, but give the Mustangs defense credit. It almost looked like he just dribbled the ball off his foot even before he was touched. So you're going to see Laurel Highlands continue with that full court pressure, no doubt. Coach DeSico's thinking now that he's going to bring him out, and Davis will score the three. And that'll get him out of the zone. Yeah. Well, that's going to be one of those things. They're, they've already got a couple players in foul trouble and really can't afford anybody else. Lippincott Lippin doubled up there. And now taken away again. Here comes the Mustangs. Davis. And he'll take it to the hoop and score it. 
TJ may need a timeout here at 21 to 12, a nine point run for the Mustangs coming out here in the second quarter. Right. Yeah, TJ looking for their first points in the second quarter. Ran into his own man there. <laughs> Lippincott. Lippincott set a pick on, <laughs> on Lowry there. Lowry now being guarded by Davis. Step back, and he has it blocked. Wow. And that's going to be Lippincott with the foul. That was a definite foul. Lippincott, that so wasn't a cheap one either, I can I tell you. it's going to be one and one. Well, that's his second foul, too. And Lippincott, he's not a small fella. Six-foot-two sophomore. And I believe that's going to put Pratt to the line, one and one. No, oh, and Coach DeSico is going to take a chance and bring Berger back in. So now you have Berger and... Also, Bender checking back in, both of them with two fouls. Seeing this get away a little bit now with a nine-point lead for the Mustangs. Pratt on the way, gets the front end of the one-on-one. Well, he's one for three from the line here tonight. As you said, came in a 75% foul shooter. So the Mustangs now with an 11-point run to start the second quarter, which... Started tied at 12. Well, and as we said, just a matter of time before they warm up a little bit. But now with Berger and Bender back in, and that's going to be a foul call there on Keandre DeShields. That's the first for him and the – Only the fourth team foul. Fourth team foul on the Mustangs. As we said, Chambers picked up his second in that first quarter, so he hasn't seen any activity – here in the second at all yet. Trying to get Berger back in the offense. Now guarded there by Davis. It looked like a walk, but a nice little step in. Left-handed layup by Berger. Gets the first two in the second quarter for Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, the first points, that was three minutes in. Davis will launch another three, and he'll hit it again. Two made threes in the last minute for Brandon Davis. What the Mustangs needed. Now being guard, Lexi now get it over to Sullivan. Back to Berger. Trying to do it himself. And he is going to be fouled. That's going to be, I believe, on Davis. That is going to be on Davis. That's going to be his first, but it's going to send Berger to the line. Berger, a, only a 58% free throw shooter, surprisingly. That's very surprising. Yeah. Because I mean he, uh, he's I mean he can shoot the threes, no doubt. Maybe he was only one for two or <laughs> two for yeah. five. Yeah, we didn't get full numbers; we just get percentages. So, but he did knock the first one down. It looked pretty smooth doing that. Yep. So he's got six now. Definitely better than a 58% free throw shooter. Yeah, I was going to say maybe one tough game, but no, he's definitely he's a, he's a smooth-looking player, no doubt, especially as a sophomore. Davis just looking, oh, nice pass inside and blocked away. Wow, just took a little bit of time. Krisner did not have the clean handle on it, good, couldn't get it up to the hoop. And that gave Berger, I believe, or it might have been I think it was Bender. Mendick, yeah. I think it was Mendick underneath who actually poked that away, but yeah, beautiful look underneath. Krisner just couldn't convert. There's a runner in there by Lexi off the back iron. Davis gets it back to, and there's Pratt from the foul line again, doesn't get it to go. DeShields working hard in there, and he's going to be fouled. That could be number three on one of the two well, big guys. It's going to be number three on somebody. And that's number 11. Bender gets his third. So Bender picks up his third with 3.52 to go. Quickly to the bench, to the scorer's bench is Adam Weidman. No doubt he'll be coming in for Bender. Number 22, six foot three senior forward. Yeah, Bender had four points in that first quarter. Looked pretty good. But now with foul trouble, he's going to have to take a seat. Two made free throws there for the Shields. Makes it 28 to 16 with 3.48 to go here in the second quarter. Lowry working against the Shields. Good switch out front. Bender now looking for space. Three on the way. No good. Rebound pulled down there by Krisner. 
Gets it to Gallagher. He brings it quickly ahead. He'll stop and shoot the three. Off the rim, no good. Short. Little quick shot there, and Bender will bring it back. Good spin move there, and wow. Nice move. Dynamic move there by Evan Berger. Berger now with nine. Nice move Gallagher. by Rod on the other side. Brings it right back with his 10th point in the contest. In and out. And for Lowry. Gallagher now will bring it back quickly. Davis for three, count it, no. There's the Shields battling in there, and he's going to be have it knocked away, but he's fouled that time, and that might be on Berger. No, I think that's going to be on 22. Oh. I think that's going to be on Weidman. That's going to send the Shields back to the line where he just knocked down two. I'm going to have Kavanaugh checking in for the Mustangs here. Might be giving the Shields a break after the foul shots. Or Pratt, maybe. I believe that's what it would be. Yeah, he's going to give Pratt a little breather. <laughs> so now. The Shields at the line after making the first. And give him six off the bench. Four at the foul line. Yeah, so after missing his first, he knocked down the next four at the foul line. 2.42 to go, and the Mustangs now up by 14. Their largest lead of the contest. Sullivan now has it knocked away. Mendick, three on the way, and Lowry connects for three. Back to an 11-point game. Gallagher over to the Shields. He'll take the long three. That's off the rim, short. And nice have, job. Nice job by Cavan on the tie-up. That'll be T.J. Ball, but you're right. Good defense there by Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh saw the opportunity to grab that and did just that. The good job. He played good defense last time, Gary, against Woodland Hills. Had a couple steals and a couple swatted passes away. So he's, he's been giving Coach Hogger some good minutes off the bench. We talked about him in the JV game. He shows a lot of promise, just kind of raw talent. Yep. That's a Ooh. travel, got away with it. Yeah, he did. Lexi back up top to Laurie. Can't get around Davis. On the left wing now, this is Mendick. He's going to be fouled. Looked like Rodney might be his second. I think it's going to be. That and might it be is. one and one for Thomas Jefferson. Or that's yeah. the sixth foul. I have it for one, two, three, four, five. That's six, 16 fouls. And that'll bring Berger back in. Now, Berger's got to be careful here in this last minute and 50 because he surely does not want to pick up his third. Gets it into Berger. Lowry will take another three and hit another one. Wow. Junior guard Lowry, back-to-back -back three, cuts the lead down to single digits at eight. Yeah, and he's got nine. He's having a good game. The Shields to the hoop and with the scoop. The Shields off the bench providing some offensive spark for the Mustangs. He's got eight for the night. The Mustangs now with a minute 20 to go. Back Looking. up to a 10-point lead. Berger yeah. now on Rodney. Gallagher's got to be careful, too. He'll hand it over to Sullivan. Lowry again, and he's three for three. Feeling it. He is feeling it. Makes it a seven-point game. Yeah, Jag's not going away. Cross now to Davis. Um, to Shields, he'll take it into the hoop. Won't get it to go. Gets his own rebound. Puts it back up and scored again for the Shields. Calling for a foul. Didn't get it. Yeah. Just up keep playing. <laughs> Just keep playing. Yep. 41 seconds to go. Berger now against Gallagher. They open the field up, and that's a good defense by Rodney. Gets it ahead now, but Berger alertly back for the defensive steal. In the corner now on the way, and... Adding to the three-point barrage there was Sean Sullivan. <laughs> wow. Fifth made three by Thomas Jefferson, and now six-point difference in this game. Mustangs will hold for one at 36-30 to 30 with nine seconds to go here in the half. Gallagher tried to do it himself with five, four, three, two, one, and he takes it in, can't get it to go, rebound, too late. 
No foul called, that'll do it for the half. Competitive first half with the Mustangs up by six, 36-30 at halftime. And we'll be back with halftime activities and statistics. Gary Frankhauser along with Tony Anula, Jerry Dupay behind the camera. You're watching the South Union Township Sports Network. The key to success in life is teamwork. On and off the field, in the workplace, in the home, in our schools. Teamwork gets it done. The world of competitive sports offers many good things, the most important of which is teamwork. Individual talent may win a few games, but teamwork wins championships. Go team! Go Laurel Highlands Mustangs! This positive message has been brought to you and paid for by Jason Scott. This is Dr. Fraser Stokes. Fatty liver affects 30% of Americans and is a leading cause of cirrhosis and liver cancer. Risk factors for fatty liver include alcohol abuse, obesity, diabetes, and high blood pressure. At SWGI, our board-certified gastroenterologists, Dr. Ruthart, Calabrese, Hoppy, and I specialize in the care of fatty liver. Call 724-437-7677 or visit swgispecialists.com. Smith, Lewis, and Chess, CPOs in Uniontown. We'd like to wish the Laurel Highlands boys basketball team and the coaches on having another successful basketball season this year. to the Law Hines boys basketball team and their coaches on having another successful basketball season this year from the Law Hines Mustang Boosters. day at the office bad day behind the wheel hey stuff happens even to the best of us at least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit get eerie rate lock from eerie insurance gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car driver or your address plus seriously good service now that's something to smile about your eerie agent in uniontown and ross traver township is sprawls insurance group 724-437-9812 or go to sprawlsinsurance.com eerie rate lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage it's not maybe Back here at Laurel Highlands with the fire alarm blaring. <laughs> it's halftime. The Mustangs on top 36 to 30. It was 12 to 12 after one, Tony, and the Mustangs took it out to a 14 point advantage in the second quarter. But Thomas Jefferson, relying on the three point play, brought it back to a six point game. Well, yeah, and Lowry with three made threes in that second quarter. And that was the difference. That's what kept uh, Thomas Jefferson in this game. And he had nine in that quarter. And that's, a, like as you said, Gary, out to a 14-point lead. And then all of a sudden, the Mustangs couldn't hit a shot. Thomas Jefferson did. And right now, only trailing by six at half. And let's take a look at those halftime statistics with, uh, as we said, the Mustangs scoring 12 in the first and 24 in the second. And Thomas Jefferson, 12 in the first and 16 in, I'm sorry, 18 in the second. Right. So with leading score for the Mustangs in that first half was Brandon Davis, who had 12. He had two made threes. He had eight points in that second quarter. Keandre DeShields and Rodney Gallagher both with 10. Gallagher had a made three as well. And Jaden Pratt with four. So really only four Mustangs scoring in that first half. And the Mustangs, after going one for four at the foul line in that first quarter, 
ended up nine for 12. So they got hot at the line, hitting their next eight. So the Mustangs, as you said, 12 in the first, 24 in the second for their total of 36. For the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars, they were led in that first half by Ryan Lowry. He had three made threes in that first half, three of them in the second quarter. Evan Berger had nine. He also had a made three. Bender with four all in the first. Sean Sullivan had a made three. And Joe Lexi had a made basket in that first quarter. 12 in the first, 18 in the second. And the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars, five for five from the line here tonight. And as we said, they had five made threes, three by Lowry, one by Berger, and one by Sean Sullivan. Well, in that uh, latter part of the second quarter, the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars found ways to get open from three-point range, even against the Mustang pressure man-to-man defense. So you might see the Mustangs come out into something a little different, maybe a 1-3-1, trapping in the corners, trapping out at the foul line, and uh, giving, showing the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars something a little different on defense. Well, yeah, and I would agree, Gary. I think you might, you might see him come out in the zone and try to make him beat you from the outside. Plus, give them a little bit of uh, defense on the outside. They really didn't do anything underneath. The Mustangs controlled the boards in that first half. But the Mustangs are going to have to pick it up here in the second half. This is the closest it's been since last year, <laughs> to and be honest with you. a lot of confidence on that Jaguar sideline. Right. As they come out of the locker room for their halftime warm-ups. The Mustangs will be coming out here in a moment. And we'll be back with sec- second half action here on the South Union Township Sports Network as we take a look at our South Union Township Sports Network sponsors. We'd like to thank all of our sponsors for making it possible for us to be live streaming these Laurel Highlands boys basketball games on the South Union Township Facebook. The Sprouse Insurance Group here in Uniontown with Agent David Hughes. United Bank with branches throughout Fayette County, West Virginia, and along the eastern seaboard. <laughs> Davis and Davis, Attorneys at Law. Smith Lewis Chess, CPAs in Uniontown. Jason Scott, the South Union Township Supervisor. All the supervisors at South Union. The Southwest Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI in Uniontown, with our friends Dr. Calabrese, Dr. Ruthart, Dr. Stokes, and Dr. Hoppy. Sebley, Mahalif, and White, the Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys, along with the Laurel Highlands Boosters, provide the opportunity for us to bring you this live streaming worldwide, Tony. Worldwide. <laughs> Scary thought. We'll be right back. At what point did everything change? When did service get taken out of service industries? It's too bad because people are busy these days at life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service, real service, from a person you know and a face you trust. At a bank, we're changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank, at your service. Attorneys from all over the state and nation advertise in southwestern Pennsylvania for personal injury and workers' comp cases, but most of them send their assistants to do the legwork. You might not even meet your attorney until your first hearing. We're local attorneys, Davis and Davis. We meet directly with our clients, including free consultation. There are no fees until you receive money on your case. If you've been injured, call Davis and Davis, representing you and your neighbors yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Call 724-437-2799. Bad hair day? Bad day at the office? Bad day behind the wheel? Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sprowls Insurance Group, 724-437-9812, or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage. It's not... Here we go, Tony, ready for second half action. I believe it is Mustangs' possession as we start the second half, and it looks like the squad that will come out for the Mustangs is going to include the Shields, 
who did not start the game, but we'll have Gallagher, DeShields, Chambers, Davis, and who's the fifth? Pratt, I'm going to guess. Well, there's only four of them out there now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. He's just doing some haberdashery changes there. Had to tuck some things in and do some things. So Here we go. Mustangs with the six-point lead as we begin the second half, facing a 2-3 zone now for Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson believing that the Mustangs have not been that effective from three-point range, although Davis was hot in the second quarter. Over to the Shields, out on top to Chambers. Now the Shields dribbles baseline, stop, pop, no good, and Rebound there, pulled down there, but thrown away as Gallagher will come away with it. Get it up to court. Pratt can't get it to go. He just cannot find the range. Thought Rodney might take that one to the hoop himself. Yeah, I think you're going to see Rod try to take this game over himself, period. Watch and see. They need a spark right now, and there's a pass that. And that's behind the bank board, and really unnecessary not timely for that I mean that ball was behind the bank board and really no chance for the flying to shields well and you only you only have a six point lead I mean you got to be careful here be a so, little more fundamental exactly use of time get some good shots here's Laurie the three point sh hot shooter in the second quarter being guarded there by Davis Three on the way and score it that time for Sullivan. Three-point game, 36 to 33. Sullivan hit his last two three attempts. Well, and the Mustangs. Gallagher will take a three. No good to Shields, and he's fouled. And that's going to be on number 11, Bender, and that'll be his fourth, I believe. It is going to be his fourth. That's going to bring Lippincott quickly off the bench and yeah. send the Shields to the line once again. Four for five in the first half. Well, as you said, the Mustangs looking for their first point of this second half. The Shields. And we figured he'd see plenty of time here in this game. As you said, missed the last game against Woodland Hills with illness. Doesn't look like he missed too much. I mean, obviously, he's missed a couple close baskets here tonight, but still and looks good. Out, in and out, so the Mustangs hold on to a four-point lead. Even the crowd here tonight is in a little bit of a lull, Tony. I think they're shocked. Bender. I'm sorry, Berger made Rodney lose his balance. There's a lot of battling underneath for space there with Lippin caught into shields. They get it in there, but it – Thrown away, and here comes Davis. He'll take it the length, coast to coast with Brandon Davis. Coast to coast, and that's the thing, Gary. Another turnover that led to another layup on the other side. Back to a six-point lead. That's where we were at at the beginning of the second half. What we got? Wow, they're going to call an offense. I think Lippincott. I'm not so sure. It may, may be so on the high pick. Yeah. One, two. So Billy Beans says one, two. So it was an illegal screen on top of the lane there. Pratt now has it. And he's knocked gonna away. pick that's up gonna another one. Lip and caught again. And that's gonna be his fourth. And he's gonna he better be careful here. He's gonna he's look, gonna look for an explanation, but <laughs> I mean, he, he just basically what happened he was, him up, yeah, yeah, he bodied him up, and he really didn't give uh, Pr Pratt, Pratt a chance to even land. So now all of a sudden, two bigs going to be out of the game here for Thomas Jefferson, and now it's time for the Mustangs to make a move. All the way out on top to Chambers, to Shields now against the 2-3 zone. Gallagher looks for the screen to the hoop, and that's going to be an offensive foul. No call. Wow. And Gallagher. Gets it to the hoop, so Gallagher gets the benefit of a no call there with a man on the floor. Yeah, it was tough there. <laughs> Berger for three, no good. Gallagher now coming back himself to the hoop with the left. Score it. 
No one finishes better than Rodney. <laughs> oh, no, they don't. <laughs> and he will now have a 10-point lead, and Thomas Jefferson will take a 30-second timeout. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. It's 5.13 to go here in the third. Mustangs on top, 43-33. Personal injury can come in many forms. No matter what your injury, the attorneys at Davis & Davis will personally meet with you to discuss your case, just like we have over the last 40 years. Trust your case to a local, experienced legal team. Trust Davis & Davis. After the 30-second timeout, called by Coach Dom DeSico for Thomas Jefferson, the Mustangs will... Be bringing out the full court pressure here. Looks like the 2 2 1 full court zone press to be applied. Or it could be full court man to man, and that's what it looks like. Gallagher is going to be on Berger. That's a good matchup. I mean, obviously, Rod, extremely good defender, and Berger, a nice looking offensive player as a sophomore. Berger so. with a little bit of a height advantage there on Rodney. He stepped out about. Oh, we're going to have a block called on Chambers, and that's going to be his third. So now Chambers, and let's see how long this Coach Hogger is going to ride him. It's the first team foul on the Mustangs here with 4.58 to go in the third. Swing it all the way out. Now into the corner. Berger thought about the three. Now he'll take it himself with the spin move, looks like. And that was a travel. Didn't call. But Keandre DeShields with the rebound. Inside the Chambers. Can't get it up to the hoop. That's going to be a jump ball, and Thomas Jefferson will have it. Joe just could not grab the handle. Would have had an easy layup. Yeah, he would have had an easy layup. Just looked like he fumbled it there a little bit, then tried to put it on the floor, and that was not a good move because he had three Thomas Jefferson defenders around him. So 10-point lead, Gare. So Lexi on to Lowry. Lowry looking to get his three-point. No, almost stole it away, and now we're going to have a foul called here on Davis. Little too much contact there. You know, he was trying for the steal. He's trying to ignite something here for the Mustangs. And That's his second. Brandon not real happy with that call. but Team foul number two. He needs to get back on defense and does. Berger in now to Sullivan. Lexi Sullivan thought about the three. Takes the drive. Got her travel. Yeah, and good defense there by the Mustangs to close that double team real quick. As Sullivan tried to take it to the basket. Tried to use the ball fake, but shuffled his feet. So almost halfway through the third quarter, and Thomas Jefferson in a little bit of a lull. Just three points here so far in the quarter. Now a 3-2 zone for Baseline drive, Bratt could not get the handle. That's going to be knocked out of bounds and stay with the Mustangs. Good pass there by Brandon Davis to a cutting Pratt. Again, could not keep the handle. All the way out on top to Chambers, gets it to the Shields. Rodney with the fadeaway, in and out, no good. Mustangs. Come away with the long rebound, Joe Chambers. So another opportunity for the Mustangs, leading by 10. Chambers thought about the three, did not take it. Now to Pratt. Can't get it to go at the foul line. Almost a steal there by DeShields, but back with numbers come the Jaguars. Berger now over to Sullivan. Lowry. The three-point shooter in the second quarter has yet to take one here in the third. This is Lowry here. He'll take the three. In and out, no good, but a rebound pulled down by number 22, Weedman, but he is unable to keep a handle on it and it goes off his leg out of bounds. And the Mustangs have been playing excellent defense in this quarter against both Berger and Lowry and not allowing much Offense from those two. Chambers to Davis. Now Pratt at the elbow, and he finally hit, hits one. So Jaden Pratt, first two here in the second half, gives him, what, 
six for the night. Berger now. Oh, go to the hoop with the left, and that's knocked away by Pratt. To Shields now, looking for help. Gets it to Gallagher. Double team there on the wing. Chambers to Pratt. He'll take it to the hoop, score it. That's what you like to see, Jaden Pratt going to the hoop. Well, they're starting to spread the floor a little bit, and that's what's happening. The Mustangs are getting a chance to post up, and even if Pratt, he's taking a couple shots from the foul line there, but he's had a couple guys wide open underneath for a basket. And Berger now will on the on the uh, junk basket, I call it. That ball was bouncing all over the place. Pratt now with a two-pointer comes back again from the baseline, and Jaden Pratt with back-to-back hoops. Makes it 49 to 36. Mustang did match their biggest lead at 14 momentarily, but the three by Berger cut cut into that. Now Berger trying to go one on one with Rodney Gallagher. Gets it on top now to Lexi. Over to Sullivan. He'll take it to the hoop. The runner won't go, and Pratt strong rebound. The De- Shields to the hoop. And a floater goes for Keandre DeShields. 51 to 36 now. 15 point advantage for the Mustangs with 120 to go here in the third. And it's really evident, Gary, without having either Lippincott or Bender in there as the bigs underneath for TJ. Mustangs right now having their way underneath. Driving in. Lexi not able to get the hoop. Chambers to Gallagher. With the reverse, won't go. Davis with the rebound and the put back won't go. Tip back. The Shields now will try to finish and will. Four shots at the hoop that time by the Mustangs. Pays dividends. 48 seconds to go. Mustangs up to 53-36. 17-point lead. 40 seconds to go now. And it's stolen away by Chambers. He'll take it. He's hammered at the hoop. Probably a good foul there by Sullivan to deny the easy layup but that will put Chambers at the line for two and bring number 22 Sumter Sumter to the scores table along with I'm see, trying to pick up who the other Mustang is underneath the, I think it's going to be Krisner he's going to come in for Chambers Chambers with his first point of the night so we need Joe to make this one so the substitution can come in and allow him to sit down for the final 35 seconds with three fouls. Yeah, but I'm not so sure he wants that to happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there it is. And that is Prisoner. So the Mustangs will pick up full court again with Gallagher guarding Berger. Spread it out and let him go one-on-one. And he's going to be fouled. That's going to be on Rodney. That might be his third. It is his third. Kind of interesting there. Gallagher really didn't slide his feet when Berger went down the lane and just tried to reach to get the steal. They're going to take Rodney out here with his three fouls. Well, that's not a bad move. 22.3 seconds to go. Give Rod a little break. He's looking at Coach Hogger like, what's happening here? They have some good plays out of bounds. That's a foul called away from the play there. That's going to be on Sumter, I believe. It is. Sumter just trying to establish some position underneath, and he gets called for the push. Good defense there by Sumter, but a nice cut. Unable to finish there was Lowry on the easy layup. Davis now has it taken away. A lot of loose balls. Oh, Lexi with the runner. Wow. Lexi with a nice move there. Get his first pass. 38 with eight seconds to go. Davis to the hoop. No foul called. Two, one. And they're going to get a hoop at the buzzer. No. Wow. Berger had the layup at the hoop. Did not get it to go. And the Mustangs. Finish the quarter, 55 to 38. We'll be right back with fourth quarter action here on the South Union Township Sports Network.
Smith, Lewis, and Chess, CPOs in Uniontown. We'd like to wish the Law Hines boys basketball team and the coaches on having another successful basketball season this year. We're just about ready for fourth quarter action. The Mustangs outscoring the Jaguars in the third quarter, 19 to eight. To add to that halftime lead of six, making it now a 17 point lead as we head into the fourth quarter. And I believe it's gonna be the Mustang ball on the possession arrow as they come out here to start the fourth quarter with Krisner Gallagher Davis, the Shields, and Sumter for the Jaguars. Lowry, Lexi, looks like uh, Lippin caught. No burger. No burger to start Sol the quarter. Sullivan and 21 is Mendick. With the Keandre with the spin, won't go. Gallagher trying to get the rebound. Krisner pulls it down. Yeah, good fight under there by Gallagher just to keep that ball alive and let the Mustangs get an offensive rebound. The Shields trying to three. Gallagher with the rebound, score it. So another three opportunities at the hoop there by the Mustangs. Gallagher now with 16, a game high 16. Krisner with the, and he's fouled. Wow. Ooh. Went down hard. Nailed there by Joe Lexi as he made the nice steal and went to the hoop. Yeah, he went strong. <laughs> There's no doubt. A nice aggressiveness there by Blaze Krisner, and he's going to go to the line. He's one for three from the line here this year, looking for his first points. Gets the first. Well, Krisner, the junior, five foot ten junior guard, getting plenty of playing time here this evening. Sure is. Second one up and good. It's the Mustangs now up by 21. I can't imagine that Berger's going to be on the bench too long here. Nope, as that's thrown away by Lowry, looking in the corner there for Joe Mendick, and you must be clairvoyant. It's like Miss Cleo, baby. <laughs> I could see the future. <laughs> I think you have ESPN. Yeah, I do. <laughs> ESPNU as well. <laughs> Gallagher now. Cross to the Shields. Sumter playing the post. They're going to work it around the outside. Use some clock as the Shields cuts through the middle, and he'll hit the short jumper. The Mustangs now pulling away at 61-38. You know, the difference really was that third quarter when the Mustangs turned up the defensive pressure. Three on the way, no good that time by number 21, Mendick, but tracked down there by Sullivan. He nicely plays it off Sumter's leg. I'm sorry, that was Lippin caught in the corner. Whoa, whoa, little, little, little uh, extracurricular activity as Lippin caught and Gallagher kind of got tangled up. Yeah, not, probably not a good move. No. <clears throat> I mean, the thing of it is, Lippincott, he's got to be careful. He's got four piles. I'm not sure he cares. <laughs> I don't think he does at this point, <laughs> and I can't blame him in a sense. To the hoop, and that's going to be a foul there on Sumter. Going to the hoop was number five, Sean Sullivan, and that will put – Sullivan to the line for two. Sophomore guard. So a few nice underclassmen for Thomas Jefferson. Most definitely. I mean, they lost, what, four seniors to graduation last year. Sullivan, that's the first miss from the foul line. Just their first in the second half, I think. Well, that's their first foul shot. Yeah, yeah. they're five for six for the game. Jaden Pratt will come in for Sumter. 
Sumter gave good minutes to Coach yes, Auger. I mean, Grant, he picked up two fouls, but did a nice job defensively. Here's Sullivan now. He's 70% free throw shooter. Gets Got a the second. second, and it's going to be a timeout call by Thomas Jefferson. It's going to be a full timeout. Gary Frank Kauser, along with Tony Anula and Jerry Dupay, you're watching the South Union Township Sports Network. At what point did everything change? When did service get taken out of service industries? It's too bad, because people are busy these days, at life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service, real service, from a person you know and a face you trust. At a bank where changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank, at your service. Back here at the Harold Horse Taylor Memorial Gymnasium, the Mustangs on top, 61 to 39. Mustangs turned up the defense here in the second half, Tony, and it certainly shows on the scoreboard. Well, and that's what we said, Gary, just holding this Thomas Jefferson team to eight points after allowing 18 in that second quarter. Only eight points allowed in the third quarter, and only nine points so far here in this half. So you can see that the Mustangs did turn it up a little bit, and it's resulted in. A huge lead for the Mustangs right now. Chambers. Pratt from the foul line. In and out. No good. Chambers with the offensive board. Gets it out to his buddy Davis for three, and he'll hit. Chambers with the assist and the offensive rebound. And Davis with his third made three of the night. And a near turnover there. Davis with 17. Yes. Three on the way, no good. Jaguars unable to find the Chambers. Nice ball fake. Gets still on the board. 66 to 39. Laurie trying to do it himself, and that is swatted away by Jaden Pratt. And that'll bring an ooh and all from the <laughs> Mustang faithful. That's it. Really the first time that this crowd's been into this game. No excitement, no dunks, no uh, showtime as we're used to seeing. But So it's uh, kind of good to see, though, that the Mustangs really not at their best. Still with a, what, 26-point lead? Right. 27. 22, it's 27. Berger, no good. Rebound now. Lippincott battling under there. And what are we going to have? Foul, foul called on Pratt. the Mustangs, and that's going to be on Jaden Pratt. Just his first. First foul of the game for him. Kind of surprising. He's been good about foul. that. Yeah, he's been uh, been extremely good all year and staying out of foul trouble for the Mustangs. Last year it was kind of the hamstring there. All kind of activity going on under the hoop now as Rodney Gallagher and Lippincott just get tangled up. What's a, is there a call or no? They're going to settle everybody down here. I don't know if they called a foul or not. I think it was they, just. Mr. Beaner is going to let us know. Technical foul. Technical on 15. So he'll foul out. So taking control out there and doing a good job is. Bill Beaner, the official here this evening. And uh, we kind of saw that coming, Tony, in the last couple of uh, plays there where Lippincott was getting tangled up, looked like intentionally with Rodney Gallagher. And on that out-of-bounds play, he just found Rodney and kind of put a little uh, suplex choke hold on him. <laughs> he, had him he had him in the, uh, that's right. the spider had him in monkey the, hole. He had him in the sleeper hold there, trying to put Rod to sleep. Rodney will go to the line for the technical foul shots. Two shots. Two shots in the ball. And if he can convert here, will be a – nope, misses a second. So it's still a 28-point 28. 28 lead. So now the Mustangs. Just one point in the quarter so far for Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, and only nine in this second half. And we said we thought it was – 
the way they played in that first half, they really gave the Mustangs a tough time, but the Mustangs turned it around. Rodney now trying to find some room. Gets to the hoop and finishes again. Gallagher with the crossover to his right and just blows by the defender for the right-handed layup. Number 11 there is Bender back in the game. Three on the way, in and out. Berger now has it knocked away. <laughs> Get it back out here to Bender. Has a man wide nice open pass. underneath and losing his man that time, Joe Chambers. So score it for Joe Lexi. Now the lead. 69 to 41, 28 point advantage. Pratt. Pretty move, baseline. Might have got away with a little hook. There. I was going to say, I was just going to say that, Gary. It looked like he kind of hooked his way into position there, but he's going to get the basket no matter what. It's not a foul unless it's called. That's right. Now short on the jumper there was Bender. Baseline, Gallagher can't get it to go. He's knocked down, finishing his the shields. Hogger has some troops at the table. Yes. Time for the shock troops here. You get a 32-point lead. That's going to be on Davis, and it's probably a good foul. Get some substitutes yep. in now with the running clock as well because of the 30-point lead. So complete line change for the Mustangs. And coming out of the game will be all of the <laughs> Mustang starters. Let's tell you what the lineup is for the Mustangs. Number 14, Michael Bittner. Number 24 is Krisner. Number 12 is Nathan Schwartzweger. And number 40 is Patrick Cavanaugh. Also in there, number 11, Mason Bullish. Right. At the line for TJ. Joe Lexi for two. I'm sorry, one and one. Does hit the first. 3.39 to go. Looks like Cody Carter's going to check in for the shooter. Lexi. And you're right as Karchner comes in. 5'11 junior guard. Prisoner now gets it out to Schwartzweger, bullish. <laughs> Crossed here to Bittner. Now on top to Prisoner. Intent really. to use some time. Gets to the bullish. Now Prisoner had the shot, decided he wanted to move to the left a little bit. Good idea. Very good idea. Knocks down. 75-43. Bender to the hoop. Won't go. Knocked out of bounds. Back to Thomas Jefferson. Some more substitutions coming in for Thomas Jefferson. Number 30, which we don't have. Uh, no, we don't. And number 20, which is Jeffrey Berger. Senior guard. And take it away, Bullish with the man ahead. Ah. Bittner, can't score it there, was Bittner. Yeah, Not going to get more opportunity than that for to get on the board. No, you won't. In a varsity game. <laughs> so now the crowd chanting for Malachi Wallace to come in. With 2.12 to go. Thomas Jefferson, we saw some of these guys in the JV game. Foul there by number 24. It's going to be And that is Krisner. Going to be a two-shot foul. And send number 33, Brody Evans, to the line. Evans, no numbers for the year. We got one now. Yep. That's going to be... <laughs> Malachi into the game. Malachi, Coach Hogger going to have him cherry pick. 
Hitting both there was Brody Evans. They're trying to get him a basket. Mustang bench trying to root on Malachi. There he is posting up. Got it up. Can't get it to go. Going to get it to him again. <laughs> Looks like Thomas Jefferson's going to let him shoot. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he's trying to post up now. He's doing a nice job. Little pass. They're going to deflect that away. Bring it back comes. quickly is Karchner. He'll take the baseline jumper and hit. Nice. 75 to 47 with a minute 19 to go. <laughs> Mustangs probably need to just run their offense here. Well, they're trying to get Wallace a basket. I mean, there's, you can see we've seen this before. What a screen. <laughs> oh, and he's fouled. And he's he going to go to the line, line though. <laughs> Malachi Wallace, the fan favorite. Oh, he's definitely a fan favorite, no doubt. He's telling the, telling the crowd <laughs> he's to like, quiet down. He's giving him he's the like, He's burger. like Tom Brady. <laughs> First one up. Ooh, a little strong. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Billy Beans saying relax a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Second one up. Yes! <laughs> and he scores a boo hoop. So Malachi on the board. The fans go wild. <laughs> And he can't wipe that smile off his face either. It's our buddy number 30, who we don't know, and now <laughs> score it inside for number 33, Brody Evans, with 40 seconds to go. Evans with four quick points off the bench. Look at Wallace trying to set See another it. screen. Here's Bullish. Now they're going to. Oh. He might have got fouled there foul a little called. bit. Yeah. And that's going to put Bullish to the line with the clock continuing to run. And. It'd be stopped with 23 seconds to go. Foul was on Ben Rubinoff. Here's Bolish. He that. gets on the board. Score sheet's filling up there, Tony. Eight Mustangs in the scorebook tonight. At halftime, there was only four of them, right? Exactly. Nice pass there. Corner three on the way, in and out, no good. Malachi with the rebound, gets it out to Bittner. Bittner, no, won't go. Four, three, two, and one. That'll do it here from the Mustang Corral. Mustangs come out victorious, 77 to 49. Here at the Mustang Corral, the Harold Horse Taylor Memorial Gymnasium, the Mustangs go to 7-0. Thomas Jefferson, 2-6, and 0-1 oh in conference. The Mustangs pick up their first section victory. We'll be back after these messages on the South Union Township Sports Network to wrap things up and give you the final statistics. The key to success in life is teamwork. On and off the field, in the workplace, in the home, in our schools. Teamwork gets it done. The world of competitive sports offers many good things, the most important of which is teamwork. Individual talent may win a few games, but teamwork wins championships. Go team! Go Laurel Highlands Mustangs! This positive message has been brought to you and paid for by Jason Scott. and chess. CPOs in Uniontown. We'd like to wish the Laurel Highlands boys basketball team and the coaches on having another successful basketball season this year.
Sometimes good people make bad decisions, and they end up in trouble with the law. Hi, this is attorney Mark Mahalovin of Zebley Mahalovin White in Uniontown. If you're one of those people who found yourself facing legal issues, including minor criminal offenses, traffic, DUI, or other summary offenses, we are here to help you. Many times, these mistakes don't have to ruin your life. One bad decision does not make you a bad person. Let us help you fix the problem and move on with your life. Call our office today at 724-439-9200. Zebley Mahalovin White, your local attorneys helping local people. If you made a bad decision that has you in legal trouble, make a good decision now by allowing our firm to represent you. Zebley Mahalovin White in Uniontown and at zeblaw.com. Zebley Mahalovin White, local attorneys helping local people. Let us fix your life. Zebley Mahalovin White. We're back here at the Harold Horse Taylor Memorial Gymnasium at the Laurel Highlands High School with the Mustangs pulling away in the second half for a 77 to 49 victory over the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars and what was a very competitive first half saw the Mustangs tied at 12 after one and up by only six at halftime turn into a, another Mustang barrage of points in the second half Tony and uh it was defense that really did it because the Mustangs really were not on track offensively for the majority of the night and um, had to rely on the defense and offensive rebounding to get those second chance points under the hoop. Well, and that's just it, Gary. And as you said, they turned up the defense in that second half, outscoring Thomas Jefferson 41-19 to in that second half, holding him to only eight points in that third quarter. And that was really the difference in the game. And that's when the Mustangs turned it up and they got a couple easy fast break points on the other end so that was the decisive quarter and that's exactly what changed the game so let's take a look at those final statistics with uh the mustangs i think the shields coming in off the bench also provided a pretty big spark for the mustangs oh, most definitely a tough man to keep down no doubt but your final stats for the victorious mustangs who improved to seven and oh one and oh in conference play they were led on the night by two players, Rodney Gallagher and Keandre DeShields, who both had 19. Brandon Davis had 17. Jaden Pratt with 12. Joe Chambers and Blaze Krisner with four. And Mason Bolish and Malachi Wallace with the basket. Foul shot for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. So they finished 12 in the se- first, 24 in the second, 19 third, 22 in the fourth. For their total of 77, they were 17 for 24 from the foul line, and they had four made threes, three of those by Brandon Davis and one by Rodney Gallagher. For the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars, who dropped to 2-7 and seven overall, 0-1 oh in conference play, they were led by Evan Berger, who had 12. He had two made threes. He was also followed by Ryan Lowry, who had 12, and all of those came in the first half. Joe Lexi had nine. Sean Sullivan had seven, Kyler Bender four, Brody Evans four, and Cody Karcher had two off the bench. Twelve in the first, 18 in the second, eight in the third, and 11 in the fourth for their total of 49. They had seven made threes, Scare. They had three by Lowry, two by Berger, and two by Sean Sullivan, and they were 10 for 11 from the foul line. So good foul shooting, but just didn't get to the line enough. As you saw, the Mustangs went 24 times compared to only 11 for Thomas Jefferson. And uh, in the second half, we only saw, what, two threes for, for Thomas Jefferson? Two threes, one after, by Berger and one by Sullivan. After so. all of those threes in the second quarter that brought them back into the game. Right. So the Mustangs have served notice here in Section 1-5A against the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars that they are, as advertised, the number one team in 5A in the WPIAL. They'll be back in action on Friday night at Ringgold, where the Mustangs will travel down the river to take on the Ringgold Rams in another Section 1-5A contest. So tonight's game was brought to you as a joint cooperative venture featuring the supervisors, Bob Schiffbeier, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott at South Union, Atlantic Broadband Cable, Armstrong Cable, everyone at CUTV with Gary Smith and his staff. This has been Gary Frankhauser, Tony Hanula alongside Jerry Dupay on the camera. Another South Union Township Sports Network presentation. Our final, once again, here in 2022, Laurel Highlands 77, Thomas Jefferson 49. Good night, everyone.